Okay, I know what you're thinking. Another crater, really? Well, there's a good reason for this one. And that's because we're going to go through three of the new nodes that I haven't had the time to really put together a video for. So that uh, people starting out with Gaia can have an idea of how they function. So we're going to be going over nodes like the texture node. We're going to go over the vegetation node. And of course, because this is a crater, we're going to go over the crater node. So let's have a look at how these are used, and uh, now that you see where you can take it. So the crater node is meant to be eroded. It's giving you a base form to start from, and you get to go ahead and erode it. So here we are with the shape. It starts off like this. These are the default settings, and we're going to take a quick look at some of these settings here. First thing I'm going to turn off, of course, is the displacement. Displacement is what gives you all these little details that you use for erosion. The lip, of course, is here to take this edge and make it sharper, so you get more of a ridge, otherwise it's kind of soft. And then we have uh, these four here, which assist in the creation of the shape and sort of breaking it down. So we have the width of this region right here, which is my outer scale. And then between floor and depth, we have this height, uh, as well as using the, uh, the inner scale. So really, while this one is meant to kind of control this length here, it's it's really just containing um, the gradient, the circular gradient that is involved in this. The inner scale, of course, is supposed to control this inner section. So if I were to grab that and change it, you'll notice that the inner circle gets wider. And the same kind of thing is supposed to happen with this outer one, that the outer one gets smaller. And of course, you see how this height changes, and that's because they're cutting at different points. So this will go up and down and up and down, uh, regardless of that. Other artifacts that you'll start to see occur are related both to this modulation as well as these additional settings. So it's best for you to, uh, to, to use them in small amounts, kind of work them in increments. So when you start to see something going sort of the wrong way, you can tweak another value and, and change that. So things like this uh, modulation, which represents a sine wave that's going through it, you can do that to kind of correct certain features. It can uh, help to eliminate some of these artifacts. at all possible. So I'm just going to reset these. So we have the floor, which will adjust are meant to adjust this distance here. So floor is, this floor has come down and the distance here is increased a little bit. Take it down further. See that depth up a bit more and you can see again it's getting shorter and shorter the depth again is part of this we increase that everything gets a little bit taller and that bottom section gets deeper so there's a bit of a balancing act between these different values to 
get this shallow here and this also shallow. It takes a little bit of work and at certain points you may start to see it rebound in on itself in which case then you start playing with things like the modulate. So the other usage of this is instead of an impact crater which has a lot of little tiny fiddly details you can go with volcanic which is a little bit simpler of an interface but it doesn't have that impact quality so everything starts from a base level and it's meant to have things kind of extruded outwards from that space so if i add so, so that displacement back in which was off from me fiddling with it on the other side there you can see you get that shape and then of course erosion comes back into play and we have that Play with the height, play with the scale. The noise and the overall displacement. So that's the crater node. So now we're going to move on to the next node. So what we have here is the texture node. The texture node starts from the basis of soil. So much like the soil one, we switch it to a graded mode. Let's see what that looks like. And as we switch over, you notice that this looks very similar. That's because that's the basis of it. Now, along with it comes some other features. It's got secondary fractals, it's got slope control, and it's got a way in which it processes the area of slope and the areas that are not part of that slope. So the slope here only controls it going upwards in height. If I click on that, you'll notice that this area will climb upwards. So I'm changing the slope angle. You also notice that there's other areas being cut into it. It's part of the distortion of this uh, surface, which is then cutting back into itself, and that is recognized as your patches. This is the deformation of that stuff. So as you bring this down, the deformation becomes less intense, and so on and so forth, until eventually when you get down to nothing, in which case there isn't really much of the way of distortion so it's just the only ragged edge that's there as a result of um, your existing slope if i bring those patches back up another factor that messes with those is the chaos factor so these are what would be called your chaos and right now they have an 85 percent influence on cutting through this mask if I take that down, you notice that their impression becomes much milder, much lighter. Right? Less intense cutout. The other factor that we have here is the soil. Now the soil is responsible for the amount of change between this area and this area. So as we take up the soil, we'll see a greater um, uh, a greater change in some of the forms. This one actually going upwards makes it less intense of a change, so it all looks almost exactly the same as the actual soil version here. Take it back down in the middle. And taking it all the way down would be the most extreme difference between them so this one basically becomes white uh, in fact let's look at that and this almost comes black so if we switch to the B mode you notice that it looks the same except now if I take the soil up Notice the same kind of changes here. Take it all the way up. Let's see that quality. We switch between these two. 
you notice there's not much change in the slope area, but this one remains exactly the same. No matter how much you change the soil, it's always at that lowest level that we saw in the, the previous one. And in the A mode, actually, sorry, the C mode, C mode inverts that. So if we go all the way the opposite direction now, you can see it looks the same. And if I take that all the way up, what we end up with this is inverted value plus the uninverted value. So we're working with that other area becoming inverted in this area, essentially staying as is. So this one is unaffected while this becomes inverse. And of course, just like the soil when I started with that one, setting it to graded gives us this gradient. Turning it off makes it more contrasty. And you see how that works. Now, the uh, next question is, uh, how do I use it? What do I use it for? So if we were to go ahead and let's say throw a set maps on there. And let's make sure that this is set just like that. There we go. Pin for color. That becomes the color reference. We'll see how it provides an interesting sort of breakup. But it is still a bit chunky overall, which could be good. Maybe that's what you want, maybe not. But um, the way that I like to use it is actually I like to take things so we're just going to plug the flow in directly and you can see what that looks like right so that's the basis of the flow you can kind of see some elements of that going across there but let's instead take it and plug it into texture now it's going to process it and we're seeing the flow there but and when we take that and plug it into sat maps look at that so we have these details, we can see the areas of flow going upwards and we can see the breakup of the rock in between. So this texture node, by processing other uh, parts of these maps, we can get things based on their shapes. You know, the deposit areas that are here and then see how that breaks up with this. So you get you know, little pockets in there, but they've got extra complexity versus how they would look if you just went straight ahead, right? And it's not really that interesting. So taking it through this texturization process, um, let's not grab the right one, it's like there. Process that, you can see those grooves again. Takes it through there. And we have something that's much more based on the, uh, the shape of the geometry, but has much more textural detail to it. So this is a good use for this particular tool. So let's move on to the next tool. So this is a vegetation node. So we've got our sat maps that we put together just a moment ago, and I've plugged that in to the input here. I've got the height information from my height map that I used to generate everything and that's going into height but this can be anything this is the basis for which how it calculates the slope so you can use anything else you want we'll look at that in a second and uh, I've just put together something quickly here with a curve of noise I've gone ahead and changed the number of octaves adjust the scale a little bit and I also brought its influence down and then added a lot of noise over top of it and that gives me sort of a broken up map that has a little bit of color variation in it. I just went to the green section and found an appropriate green inside my sat maps. And that's going into the override. So the vegetation now is going to go ahead and base this on the height information to calculate that slope. So the use map option, if I don't use the use map option, it goes for a solid color. You can see how that works. It just fills that space with that solid color. So I want to use my override color, which happens to be my grass or trees or whatever. I'm mixing it in here. 
and uh, we have a few other features. So I have a secondary fractal, just like the, uh, the, the texturizer has a secondary fractal, which goes in and is responsible for this breakup. We have uh, a occurrence and density, which relate to the noise factor that goes throughout this. I'm going to, uh, I think, upgrade to 1K. Excuse this, my screen is not updating at the moment. I've left things running probably for too long. Uh, so just upgrade that to a 1K. It will be a little bit slower, but not too much slower. So what you can see here is a little bit of noise throughout this. And this in part comes from this occurrence and density. So the occurrence uh, offers noise in secondary fractal that's cutting out and density um, in the slope region. So they kind of overlap each other. This chaos is what is causing the change to these uh, these regions here. So if we were to go ahead and adjust the chaos down, we should actually see, I think it increases when you decrease that value. So we see it changing here. Right, and we get that. We have our slope bottom and slope top, which works exactly like the slope node here. So maximum and minimum values of slope. The slope region, and then we have a seed relating to that uh, secondary fractal. So, if I were to go ahead and take this density all the way down, you notice everything's gone. So, we need a little bit of that density, so even just one percent. And it gives us a nice sort of noisy addition to that surface. So you can see the little bit of scattering, the dotting of that in there. Now the uh, density is more of a uniform noise pattern, whereas the occurrence is more of a clustered noise, and it's the one that's more prone to deformation when you change the values of chaos. So if uh, we increase this somewhat, maybe by two. You can see the dotting that's in there. You can see, you know, clusters of things. If I take this occurrence down, see it quickly goes to nothing. It's going to take that up a little bit. And you can see the pattern, a pattern, pattern starting to dot back in again. I'm just going to change this texture in the background to something simpler. So I'll just go with uh, how about quick color. constant here. Plug that in. That should give me a solid color I can pick from. How about this lovely blue color which is really dark at the moment. I just need to take this up all the way up. That'll give me the full bright color. There we go. And we'll plug that into the key value there. What this will do is allow us to see the pattern here. So I'm going to change this to a low occurrence, higher density. If I set the occurrence to zero, of course, it goes away. So that needs at least 1% as well. density all the way up. And 
don't know how well you see it there or not. But to me, it's, it feels a little bit uniform versus low density, high occurrence. And uh, you see it's sort of more chunky, the regions there. So once again, if I wanted to, I could take something, say like a Voronoi, and because this is pinned for color, if I go ahead and chunk that into the height, it's going to calculate slope information based off that Voronoi instead of that original erosion one. What we get is another breakup of that texture. So if you wanted to break it up even more, but then start using other mixing techniques, you know, with the, the other tools that we've looked at before, in order to then blend that yet again, you could do that. So it's a nice way to break up a texture using something else in order to, to get you there. So that's our vegetation node. So those are three of the, the new nodes available to you to play with. And uh, all I have to do is just spend a little time exploring and playing with it. Like I said, this is, um, this is great for mixing and blending based on a variety of different maps. The texture node is really good for texturizing things that otherwise are maybe a little bit too simplistic, but you like the directional flow of that data or the sh shape of those, those data uh, bits. So, you know, like uh, pools of... Uh, 